Today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The experts at TRB fully customized Dale's sensory project, then put it to the ultimate speed and angling test. The boat is looking absolutely amazing and we're gonna back this boat down the ramp and see how she rips. George Labonte joins dreamboat owner Rob Murphy aboard his very custom 35-foot Contender Express. Finding something that I love and I was passionate about has been a big motivator to keep me going through the tough and dark times in my life, and I'd encourage anybody to find what you love and do it with all the passion in the world. And Dave at Rocky Point Boatworks joins the owner of the classic 20-foot Seacraft for their maiden fishing excursion. And to actually see it come, come together like this, I'm super happy for them. And uh, you can tell these guys are just super stoked to get out on the water. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So here at Two Rivers, we're working on the Century Project. Picked it up a few months back down in Jupiter. Boat was a wreck when I got it. So we got the boat in. Uh, stripped the boat down, all wire and everything came out and started doing the rehab on it as far as getting like the rust stains and stuff like that out of the boat. I wanted to take sort of a common hull that you could go out and get anywhere that, that any person out there could go and get. We put a bit of money into it and a little bit of creativity and come out with a really cool custom boat that would probably cost less than some of the other cheap production boats out there. Now we're at the stage where the boat needs to be rigged with a new motor and electronics and power poles. We're gonna to toss it to, uh, to the guys in the back. So with every project we take on, you know, you always wanna focus on a certain part first. If you try and, you know, start working on the whole boat at once, you're gonna get way too overwhelmed. So on this century, we first started at the transom. That was the main focus, and we worked our way through the boat once we got the transom done. After we mounted the jack plate, the uh, power poles, the engine, everything else, all the rigging follows that. So all that stuff has to happen first. We're taking off the 25 plus year old rub rail, and we're gonna put on that new taco rub rail that we ordered. Also, we're gonna put on the new trolling motor because Dale insists on going out fishing in the boat and we have to be able to utilize every aspect of the boat. So Dale's got me installing this brand new 36 volt Minn Kota trolling motor on the Century project. Once you find uh, the placement of the trolling motor where you want it and you know it's gonna deploy and everything, it's the head of the trolling motor inside the boat railing. So when you pull up to docks and stuff like that, you don't hit the trolling motor and all that. When you're happy, you lay the template out, go ahead and drill your holes. Um, get it mounted and uh, we use the quick release bracket on that which is nice you can remove the trolling motor whenever you want. This boat we decided to do a wrap on with everything we got going on in the shop, the CV project with paint and everything like that. We didn't have the turnaround time to be able to do that. We got Gil from Gil Media to come out and give us a hand getting the boat wrapped. In order to do a wrap, one you have to strip all the wax off the boat. You got to get all the edges clean and then when you're installing it is I usually peel the whole sheet stick it on the side of the boat and work from the center and work your way out. It's a real easy way of changing the color of a boat at like an eighth of the cost. So once we got the boat wrapped, we could focus our attention to the rub rail. So we started at one end, just got everything lined up where we wanted it and started working our way around the boat carefully, making sure everything's straight. You don't want to have waves in the rub rail or be careful, you don't want to tighten your screws too tight and you'll see it as it goes down the rub rail if you crank them down too tight. So we just wanted to be real careful, make sure we got everything real nice. We're getting to the stages where, you know, we're looking at the non-skid and you can still see some of the blems and stuff like that in it from before. We chose Sea Deck because one, it makes the boat look newer, softer to walk on, it's a lot more comfortable when you're out in the boat. 
and it looks cleaner. It's, it's cleaner than every other thing out there, and we just didn't want to put non-skid back in the boat. So once we started getting some of the big things done on the boat, we started focusing on some of the smaller stuff that really defines a boat. So we wanted a dive ladder on the boat, so we put an Armstrong dive ladder on there, and I put it on the starboard transom right there. Nice, clean fit. Everything fit, lined up with the power poles, you know, no interference, everything was perfect. We're getting down to the final details of the Century Project. We're looking at installing some new nav lights. So we reached out to Taco and got the Taco flush mount, rubber lights. We had to relocate the lights um, when we did the trolling motors, we covered up the old nav light. Before you um, drill any of the holes, make sure that you are able to see the lights when you're running down the bow of the boat. Once I found center and I was happy with the placement of the lights, you know, each one was, was perpendicular with each other, you know, from the front of the boat, um, so you could see. We went ahead and drilled the holes, made sure fitment was perfect before we sealed everything, and then ended up putting the nice chrome cap on it, which once you tighten everything down, it gives it a real nice, flush, clean look. One of the things that we had to get done on the Century was I needed to put a new windscreen on it. Dave Singer from Rocky Point came forward. He knocked it out of the park when it came to the quality and the finish on my windscreen. The boat is looking absolutely amazing. Just a few details that need to be taken care of. And we're gonna back this boat down the ramp and see how she rips. When we come back, the professionals at Two Rivers Boat Works hit the water for a day of fishing and fun aboard the freshly completed Century Project. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as the TRB crew hits the water for a day of fishing and fun aboard the completed Century Project. We've really been working really, really hard on this 21 century project over the past couple of weeks. My guys have really put in the extra hours and um, this morning was the first morning we were going to fish off the boat and have a little bit of fun off the boat. And, but I think for me possibly the highlight of this boat this morning is, is cracking that big V8 off behind me. What guy doesn't like a big V8? leaving the dock and the water was glass smooth and just being able to mash that throttle and feel the acceleration. This is an awesome little boat. One of the motivations behind building this boat was that I'd have a platform to fly fish off of and the trolling motor on the front of the boat um, is one of the highlights of the boat for me too. It definitely makes fishing really, really easy and less stressful. You're not having to worry about, you know, the motor or anchors or anything like that. The same thing with the power poles. We we used them and did a, a spot of fishing and, you know, they anchor you right in, in the spot, in the direction you want to be. And you can just hang out silently and it just makes the whole boating experience a lot easier. Um, as I mentioned, the sea deck was probably my favorite thing I've done to this boat and as soon as they put the sea deck down it sort of took the boat from 1994 to 2020. It changed the whole look of the boat, it made the boat look a lot bigger. One of the other things we did to the boat is I elected to do a wrap on the boat. I have to admit I'm very impressed with the wrap on the boat. Overall it's just brought this whole boat together it brought the boat into 2020. The thing everybody wants to know is what about performance? We comfortably get in 60 miles an hour. It whips the boat up onto planes super quick. Um, boat's responsive. It will run at 50 all day, every day. 
um, without breaking a sweat. But this boat isn't all about speed. It's nice to go fast, but it's also nice to be able to sit in beautiful places like this and enjoy family and friends and just a little bit of time on the water. So I gotta say, when I first saw the boat, before we did anything to it, I was a little bit skeptical of how this was all gonna turn out. Man, the boat really just, it, it really stands out and it looks great. Now that the boat's done and on the water, it's, it's something else. The transformation in a week or two that we did to that thing is just unreal. And the boat performs awesome. Everything is, works great and he's really stoked about it. When you go and take that boat and you redo it the way that we did it and put new power on it, I think it rides better than most of the boats out there for its size. So it was, you know, for me, when I was looking at a boat, that's what I was looking for. And I think it's gonna be a great boat for the shop and for Dale. I'm super proud to have this boat. I'm super proud to have guys that have put blood, sweat, and tears into this boat. And yeah, this is my project dream boat. When we return, George Labonte joins dream boat owner, Rob Murphy, aboard his custom 35-foot Contender Express in this week's One Man's Dream Boat segment. This segment brought to you by Vote Water. Elect clean water candidates. Florida's water crisis is a political problem and requires a political solution. The time to fix the river is now. I paddle and I vote water. The science is settled. Human health matters and I vote water. Clean water is important to me and my family. We fish and I vote water. For clean water candidate voter guides, visit votewater.org. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. Today we're gonna to share a story, not only about a dream boat, but about a boater with a dream and a passion for something so strong, it would change the course of his life. Rob Murphy has been around the water his entire life and developed an interest in diving while in college. In 2009, upon surfacing from a dive, an encounter with a reckless boater would change his life forever. The boat on a collision course with Rob would strike him, severing both of his legs just below the knees. While recovering in the hospital, a fateful visit from Matt Bailey offered Rob hope. Matt, who designs prosthetic devices for divers, assured Rob he would dive again, and just two months later, Rob was back in the water. Rob's love for the sport would take on new intensity, which ultimately motivated him to get back on his feet, would lead him to a career in spear diving, and finally resulted in the project you're about to see. A friend of mine about 10 years ago built a similar boat to this, a 35 contender hull that he put a pilot house on. And I've dreamed about doing something similar ever since. And I looked at a million different hulls, a million different solutions, and just kept coming back to that 35. So the hull, as, as it uh, sat when I acquired it, was a uh, 1990 Express. Um, it had a pipework uh, top with a soft top, and it had old two-stroke motors. The boat was originally a diesel boat. The previous owner converted it to outboards. He filled in the, the in fiberglass over where the diesels were. Um, so it was a good starting point for what we wanted to do. So we gutted it down to the bare stringers and really designed a hull and designed the boat for my needs. We put large index fish boxes in the cockpit. We put most of the fuel forward under the pilot house. It's got twin 140 gallon fuel tanks under the pilot house. It does have an auxiliary 100 gallons under the cockpit for a total of 380. So plenty of fuel to stay out for a couple days at a time. Uh, we put a traditional centerline bilge in where the original fuel tank was. And then we started work on the design for the pilot house. For our needs to be able to go out for multiple days at a time, stand up to the elements, the spray, the storms, um, the, the pilot house just made sense. So we built two benches with custom dive tank storage. They each hold 13 tanks stored vertically, so uh, for a total of 26. And then we've got um, spots for four more on each side of the cockpit, so that brings us to 34 total. So ability for four people to go out for two or three days at a time, have all the tanks we need. And then we built just a, a basic console with room for flush mount and electronics, painted it gray just for a little bit of a contrast against the white paint of the rest of the boat. 
It's got rear-facing jump seats for uh, storage for our dive scooters, as well as any gear and things like that. Um, and then other than that, we tried to keep it simple, you know, kind of that rugged commercial theme. We used a splatter coat paint, which allowed us to save a lot of time and money and effort with the fairing, the sanding, and, you know, the overall finish of the boat. And it's also going to stand up to a beating for the long haul. We had Linex sprayed on the deck, which uh, holds up to a beating really well also, uh, really takes the abuse of, of spearfishing well. Um, inside the pilot house, we went with a little nicer finish. We went with more of a smooth paint as well as a sea deck to, to be a little more comfortable and a little bit more high-end finish for, for the family. You know, I wanted, I wanted twins. I didn't want to buy or maintain trips or quads. Suzuki 300s push the boat really well. It cruises 35 miles an hour. It'll do about 45 top end. Um, it's adequate for my needs. They were um, the affordable, economical solution. I mean, it was just a natural fit for this boat as well. The boat, once we got it in the water and started using it, it's exceeded all my expectations. Um, you know, my objectives were fuel capacity, ride, comfort, tank storage and fish storage and it, we hit it out of the park i mean there, there's really nothing i would change as we wrapped up our day with rob he left us with a message of hope to anyone facing what might seem to be an insurmountable obstacle so you know the one thing i'd love to get across to anybody who's going through tough times whether it's injuries or any other type of hard time in your life is find something you're passionate about and do it with all the enthusiasm that you possibly can um, don't let adversity set you back. It's, you, can, you can overcome anything with the right mindset, the right mentality. But, you know, um, just finding something that I love and I was passionate about has been a big motivator to keep me going through the tough and dark times in my life. And I'd encourage anybody to find what you love and do it with all the passion in the world. After an initial investment of $36,000 and spending $150,000 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Rob's dream boat comes to a total of $186,000. When we return, Dave at Rocky Point Boat Works joins the owners of the classic 20-foot sea craft for their maiden voyage. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate outboard motor. Go to SuzukiMarine.com to find a dealer near you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as Dave at Rocky Point Boat Works joins the owners of the classic 20-foot sea craft for their maiden fishing excursion. Last time I saw Chris and Randy Seacraft, I was dropping off the panel. They still had a lot to do. Heard through the grapevine that she's done, and lo and behold, I got a phone call and uh, they want to take it out for a night of fishing and you know testing things out and stuff and they asked me to go along and to actually see it come come together like this i'm super happy for them and uh, you can tell these guys are just super stoked to get out on the water as a producer of project dreamboat i could just spend a lot of time on really custom boats and it was killing me not to have my own custom boat and to be back out in the water it's, it's a really good feeling we were definitely going with a super yacht quality finish from the all-craft paint inside and out, the taco stainless rub rail, all the stainless hardware on the boat, um, some of the piping work from Birds All Marine. I mean, the boat is, it's very, very classy. Um, it's top notch. So when we first started designing this boat, I'm an old school cabinet maker and I love working with wood, so I had to have a little bit of teak. It started off with a live well and it went to the dashboard and then it kind of morphed into the stereo system around the front. It definitely takes the boat to the next level. It's really cool. First thing everybody compliments on. We met with Vic Gretto, and he designed a really awesome diamond stitch pattern, matched with some ideas that my dad had, and it really matches well with the teak. It looks really good. Obviously, one of the central points on this boat is that teak dash with the black acrylic panel with everything flush mounted. Dave killed it. Definitely one of those things that set this boat over the top. From the get-go, one of the big parts of this project was having an upper station. It's the best part of the boat. I mean, you get up and you get up there, and your visibility is extended so far, and the whole—it just feels like a different boat. And running from up there is really cool. Obviously, 
since we took this boat apart a decade ago, technology has changed phenomenally. And, you know, going from an old carbureted two stroke to this new four stroke V8 on the back of this boat, really excited to see how I was gonna perform and hammer down the throttle. And it just, it jumps out of the hole. There's more than enough power for this boat. This boat really is an entirely different boat. I mean, it still has that great Seacraft ride that we fell in love with, but the maneuverability, the handling, the speed that the new layout with the bracket and this new engine has given this boat, it's a whole other animal. It's a lot of fun to drive, and, it's, and being up in that tower, it's, it's exhilarating. So the boat performed really good. I was really excited how this motor was working, but all that love aside, it's getting dark, and Chris promised me a fishing trip. So after Chris loaded up the live well, right away I pointed out to Dave that the live well is constructed in such a way where the fish want to swim right into the water flow, which is really helpful to, for, for the fish to stay alive and survive pounding waves and, and getting out to the lands where we have to fish. My dad had the idea of adding a tackle center in the side of the console. There's a lot of open space in there. And I called up Boat Outfitters and they got to the drawing board and they made a huge tackle center with like a dozen different trays where I could have all my offshore gear, all my inshore gear right there whenever I need it, pop open the hatch, rig it up. It's very convenient. So as much as I love inshore fishing, being offshore is really where my heart is at. So a big part of this build was having a nice set of outriggers. Um, so I reached out to Taco. I got 15 foot collapsible poles on their Grand Slam bases. They swing in and out, super easy. Um, maybe a little overkill on this boat, but I want to have a two line spread and seven, eight baits in the water, I think they'll work out perfect. All right, so the sun went down and the lights came on. Chris should work for a rock man. This thing was lit up like you were at a rock show. Just real thought out, planned. It looked awesome, man. So we were in the rigging stages of this project when we filmed Tony Eden's boat in Jacksonville, his 31 contender. And as soon as I saw his lighting system on his boat, I knew I had to have it. So I reached out to Rob at Custom LED and he hooked me up with all the shadow caster lighting I needed to make this boat go full RGB spectrum. And paired with the Infinity Kappa system with the speakers and the head unit, it's just, it's wild. So when it came time for the wiring, I had to get in there and design the whole thing out. And we got this great product, the top of the line stuff from Pacer. And it went really well. Everything came out great. All the fittings, all the screws, everything was just perfect. Even though the boat's sitting right here behind me, it's just still really hard to believe that this project is finally done. I never imagined in my wildest dreams of this boat that it would come out this nice. I hope to pass this boat on to my kids one day, and in the meantime, I can't wait to get out and make tons of great memories, get back out fishing, and spend more time on the water. All right, guys, so this is gonna wrap up this season of uh, Project Dreamboat. I look forward to seeing you guys next year. Keep them one mans coming, and uh, we'll see you next year. Make sure to tune in next season to see the dreams of boat owners come true on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboats.